Today we're getting the lowdown on the new animated movie, The Death of Superman. So get ready for DC All Access. What's up guys, I'm Tiffany Smith. It's time for DC Nation and we're getting some breaking publishing news from Dan DiDio. Plus a preview of this week's Can't Miss Comics. You have notes, I don't have notes. I, just... I have like three things on here. Oh, okay. this, your Good. desk is covered with notes. My, my desk is, it's, <laughs> it's everything, every piece of paper on this desk actually is a story and it tells something to me. Well, so. I do feel like feel like anybody who's watching this, not often does everyone get to come into your guys' offices <laughs> and see what's out there. Cause there's a lot of like spoilery secret stuff yeah, going on. But... I mean, like I said, we were just talking about that before. We got, yeah. these are two pages on Heroes in Crisis. Okay, so, so the good. first two pages came, these are the first two. We're going over this, but I mean, when you see Clay Mann's art on this oh and gosh. what he's doing, that's Holly Quinn, it's absolutely beautiful. And what's what's it's fun so about that is that's what keeps you motivated. Yeah. You know, you get into so many rhythms with so many other things going on doing the real business part. Yeah. It's fun to stop and look at the art as it's, as it's developing, as it's, as it's coming in, just to keep you excited about yeah. what's coming forward. We always have a rule in here, if it excites, if it excites the people inside the building, that means that we have a really good chance to excite the fans outside because we feel really jaded yeah. about so much of what we do. Um, but when something comes over that's really exceptional, especially on the art, um, you can't help but get yeah. really motivated and remember why we're doing these jobs in the first place. Well, and it does feel like every time you try and do something bigger or do something different with characters and surprise the fans and readers, and I think bringing Brian Michael Bendis in to work on some yeah. seriously yeah, awesome yeah, yeah. issues. Look, here's your first, here's your first issue. Woo! There you go. There you go. That's yours. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I should run away right that's, now that's, and not look that's, back. That's Superman number one. So oh that's the make ready on Superman number one. So what's been great about Bendis on Superman, um, just the fact that it's Bendis on Superman. Yeah. Uh, is the reaction to the fan base. Oh uh, there's always so much conversation that takes place about it and there's a lot of conversation about Superman all the time. We had complete faith in his ability to tell these stories and we really were really behind a lot of the ideas he was pushing forward. And that first arc in Superman I think is really quite exceptional and where it takes us and the mysteries of uh, yeah. what's happening to Jonathan and other characters. I think really what excites me when I see his stories, but when we read it, he has such a, a great voice Everything that you hope from a Brian Bendis comic is there, but it works so well with Superman that you don't yeah. feel like nothing's being compromised yeah. along the way. It's interesting, we just, I mentioned this in one of the other interviews about, we just had recently had a uh, talent summit, and it was, it was amazing to see everybody come together. We had so many great people in the room, um, and we had uh, Brian and Jeff and Tom and Scott all do presentations about some of their bigger storylines, uh -huh. and they, they take advantage of what other other storylines are doing. If, if Brian Bendis is telling stories in outer space and Scott Snyder and Josh Williamson are telling stories in outer space, then we want to make sure that they feel connected in a yeah. way, not sharing the same story, but sharing the same universe and the same sky. And we want to make sure that happens on other levels. When Jeff Johns is talking to Tom King and they're finding a way to connect Heroes in Crisis to Doomsday Clock, you know, you get the little yeah. chills that run yeah. up and down your arms yep. on those things. And that was funny to see because the dots all start to come together and ideas breed new ideas. Yeah. And, and you, you, and the excitement breeds excitement. And when they start to share the excitement and share that, I think it just elevates all the material. Sometimes you have stories that don't work, and those are easy things to push aside, but when you have stories that do work or something that is working, Flash is a book that's working extraordinarily well for us right now. And the Flash War is really exploding. We're looking at Flash War 50 to really pull mm -hmm. a lot of beats together, and that's gonna feed into Heroes in Crisis also. Um, don't wanna give that away, which I just <laughs> did. But anyway, but, but Flash 50 has a big, big moment at the end, and ultimately it does bring us to some of the events within Heroes in Crisis that take place a little later, actually in September. So because of that, it elevates Flash War, it, makes, it raises the level of importance, there's the things that are occurring in Flash War that are actually going to affect things that Brian Bendis is going to be doing later on this year. Yeah. So you're starting to see that connective tissue, but if these guys aren't communicating, the last thing you want to do is people running on parallel paths and not finding a way to cross them yes. over because it, they're just missing opportunities. Then. Yep. And you don't want to miss opportunities like that. Well, and how does something, for instance, like within the Flash War, having the different versions of the Speed Force, Sage Force, Strength Force, when does something like that come up? Is that something that you guys were like, we want to go this that direction? Was actually, I, if, I'm, if, I'm not, if I remember correctly, that actually came out, Josh and James Tynan and, and Scott Snyder were all together working out a lot of their beats for Injustice League and No Justice. So they started with No Justice, it feeds into Justice League, Justice League Odyssey and Justice League Dark. But of course, naturally, because James and Josh are doing other series, they're looking for ways to tie in. And mm -hmm. the, idea between, the idea between the forces, I don't know if it started as a Flash idea, as a Justice League idea, but it is definitely being used in both areas. So yeah. I think you're gonna see uh, a way for that to establish itself very quickly. 
And it's our hope that we can establish the different forces much in the same way uh, that the speed force has become such a staple of the DC universe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Um, and obviously, I, I have to always talk about, because it's one of my favorite characters, Wonder Woman. Uh, Absolutely. Let's talk about the new Wonder Woman issue coming out. Well, the, the excitement for that is that we've been going on with the Wonder Woman's brother storyline, so you're going to see the culmination of that taking place. And I think that's really important to see. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff happening with Wonder Woman over the next few months. And I think what's, what's important about Wonder Woman uh, is that we've had multiple takes about her over, over the last few years. You know, we start with Brian Azzarello and mm -hmm. Cliff Chang, and we start with them on the new 252 version. And I think that's a really strong interpretation of who she is. And I mean, so strong that, that I think that became the basis for some of the film ideas that, yeah. that they push forward in the Wonder Woman movie. And then you have Greg come in, and with Greg's interpretation, it's been great because re he really solidifies her back as a... As, as one of the real, the tent poles of the DCU. Yeah. And it's what Greg did to reconstitute her that we used in the other series and all that. So it's his his version that's really pushing forward there. And then James Robinson's done a wonderful job trying to expand her lore with Wonder Woman's brother that, that came out of the Justice League story. I think that's where it started, uh, that Jeff did. So there's a lot of fun stuff in that. Mm -hmm. And our hope is that once this story comes to close, we're able to really build on that. I, I think Steve Orlando yep. is coming on board. Coming in next. Uh, coming in next to have some fun with the character. And then, then, then we have a, a, a new writer taking place. Uh, um, which we'll be announcing uh, very soon, but I'll, I'll tell you here now, okay? So, okay, Just so, whisper it, no, okay, one, no one will ever see this. Yeah, so we've, we've got G. Willow Wilson coming on board to take over Wonder Woman. Oh my gosh. Um, and this is a big deal for us because we've, we've seen all the wonderful work you did. She was here with us uh, several years back. She had a, her own series uh, with Vertigo. She did a mm -hmm. Vixen miniseries when I was executive editor of the line. It's gotta be 10, 12 years ago, longer maybe. Yeah. Um, so it's great to have her back at DC. Um, we feel that she's gonna bring a, a real strength of character and voice again. She's building a lot of the ideas that Greg set up, so if we keep on saying that's the, the version and that's the interpretation of Wonder Woman that really is for DCU, then she's gonna build on that. Yeah. And hopefully we, we really continue uh, to explore Wonder Woman as one of the mainstays and one of the pillars of the DC Universe. We have a, we have a, lot, of, uh, a lot of moving pieces right now. And it's funny because, you know, we, we go station by station. And as publisher, I have to step back now and I have to mm -hmm. say, listen, we're sitting here talking about DCU because, you know, because that's the heart and soul. Yeah. But, you know, we have young adult stuff that's coming out. And there, once those books start coming, that's going to be the buzz of the town. Because uh, the more that we talk about it, the more people start to get sampling of it, the more excited they yeah. get about it. And did I show you this? I got to show you something here. Go ahead, go ahead. Black Label. So this is for you. Okay. <gasps> so this, this is the format for Black Label. Oh my gosh. Okay, so a lot of people don't know this yet, so this is also, this is a reveal. Oh so what you see in Black Label is that it's going to be seen as a graphic novel sign. We're going to have some that are comic book size like this, mm -hmm. but we also have some that are going to be graphic novel size. So Batman Dam, the first one out, this is the Brian Azzarello, uh -huh. uh, Libra Mejo book. It's being oh done in a larger format, but you can see how the art looks on the interior of the book. And it's bigger, bolder. This is the old graphic novel size that we used to do. It's a European model. Uh, but I love it so much because it makes the art explode. Mm -hmm. It makes it stand apart. These are going to be more mature books, so it gives you a real clear visual point of difference yeah. from the main line. Yeah. And for me, I think this really is the next phase of storytelling. So if you look at the ink and zoom stuff over here as for young adults and for young readers and for, for a different audience, then we're going to go this way. This is actually a 48 page graphic novel. Set, cut in the same style that uh i'm like do i get to have this one because yes. literally like when you picked it up and you opened to some pages there's certain moments as a comic book fan that you open up something and it's just like my eyes got a little like glossy because i was like oh i want to read that i well, want to keep and this. you know what's funny about it is that you know it's and some people are nervous because they said oh wait it doesn't fit in a bag and board but this is to be read to be enjoyed it's yeah. a, it's, it's it's something different and i'm hoping that people, once they see the format, they won't worry about sticking it in a plastic bag. Yeah. They're gonna worry about reading it and just enjoying because the yeah. art explodes. So when you have guys like Lee Bermejo and John Bermuda Jr. and so many folks that we're bringing on board to work in this larger format, yeah. um, I think it's gonna give it a real chance to well, be sampled, seen, and loved. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but over here it says, uncorrected proof, advanced reader's copy. <laughs> so no yeah. one's ever gonna see <laughs> this version of it unless you are in this office. <laughs> but it is, so, so that's exciting cool. for me. Again, so I'll give it back just you know, this is stuff to. that we've been pushing out, but we need to stay innovative. We need to stay cutting edge, and it's not just in regards to 
creating you know, new books and new material, but also new formats, new styles, new yeah. audiences, new reach. We have the, we're pushing out in the Walmart books over here to push out into a different way. We've got Young Reader, Young Adult pushing out in another direction, Black Label pushing out in the other direction, and the DC Universe driving the big, big super engine train right down yeah. the middle. Yeah. And, and that's us. <laughs> Thanks so much for letting us come in and just see all the secrets on your desk, Dan. This My is pleasure. awesome. Thanks, Dan. That's some of this week's mandatory reading, and here is a complete rundown of the new DC titles out today. There's a lot more action going down around the world of DC, and here is everything you need to know. DC Vertigo just announced a brand new graphic novel called Six Days from writers Robert Venditti and Kevin Maurer. It's a true story of a D-Day battle that took place in a small village in France, and Venditti's real-life uncle is one of the key players. The book will land in stores next May in time for the 75th anniversary of D-Day. DC Universe, the upcoming digital subscription service, is building an epic fan experience at San Diego Comic-Con. From Thursday to Sunday, the Hilton San Diego Gas Lamp Quarter will be the temporary home of Dick Grayson's Titans Loft, the Doom Patrol Lab, and the Young Justice Watchtower. Plus, fans can explore the mysterious marshlands of Swamp Thing, Harley Quinn's Chaos Room, and plenty more goodies you won't see anywhere else. The interactive installation is first come, first serve, but you can pre-register for faster access. Check out DCUniverseExperience.com right now for all the details. There is a treasure trove of new DC collectibles out this month. Headlined by statues of Gotham City Garage Supergirl, a new Batman black and white designed by Becky Cloonan, Black Lightning from DC TV, and a deluxe version of the Bombshells Wonder Woman. If action figures are more your speed, you'll love The Flash, Reverse Flash, Batman, and Deathstroke from the DC Essentials line. And for you prop collectors out there, take the pressure off decision making with the DC Gallery Two-Face Coin Prop. Plus, DC Collectibles is re-releasing the massively popular Green Lantern Battery Prop, which will give you all the willpower you need to make it to the weekend. The Dark Knight's metal soundtrack is nearly complete, and a new song titled The Calling is emerging from the Dark Multiverse this week. You can catch the track from singer Maria Brink and guitarist Chris Howarth from the band In This Moment wherever you stream your music starting on Friday. Warner Brothers Consumer Products has partnered with Sun Events for the first ever Wonder Woman run series in the U.S. With 5K and 10K races scheduled throughout California this fall, it's time for your inner hero to hit the pavement. I've already registered, so if you want to join me, head over to DCWonderWomanRun.com right now. And finally, the 60s are back thanks to Justice League of America, The Silver Age Volume 4, which collects a run that includes an epic team-up with the Justice Society. You can relive the vintage Justice League adventures in the new trade paperback starting today. That's the news for now, but don't go anywhere because we will be right back after the panel of the week. Warner Brothers Animation is adapting one of DC's most unforgettable storylines of all time with the death of Superman. We've got producer James Tucker here to tell us what we can expect from the animated blockbuster. But first, check out this exclusive clip. So what do you think? I don't know what to say, it's... Hey Superman! Looking good. It's going to be a reminder of just how alien you are. People forget that when you're saving them from falling airplanes. True. But I have faith that... You rock, Superman! Thanks. You do, too. There's a really smart woman I know who always says daylight is the best disinfectant. Lift back to the planet. And save me from expensing cab fare to Perry White? You are heroic. You know me. Always saving the day.
his death is is a story in and of itself. It's like the things that lead up to it, the amount of time we spend with characters really affects the impact. There hasn't been a true version done, meaning they haven't. There hasn't been one where Superman has been front and center. I mean, it had, we did on Justice League. It was more of a Justice League story that mm -hmm. happened to feature Superman. So I thought maybe there's a way to do this that um, brings something new to the table that we haven't seen already. And I knew going in that I had an advantage over the first movie in that um, they allowed me to put it in the continuity of the movies I'd been doing. And so that that was kind of a hindrance for them that I didn't have. I had a, you know, like three or four movies where Superman had appeared that kind of set up his foundation. Yeah. And I know a lot of people think, oh, Superman's Superman. Everyone knows him. They don't need any foundation. I'm like, well, no. To, to make his death matter, you need to have his normal life. You need to have his love life. You need to have a reason to know who he is when he's not doing superheroics yeah. or his death won't matter. A reason to care even more A reason more about to care, him. right. And this one, obviously, for people who don't know, is coming out in two parts. What was it about this story that you thought, we really need to split this up, I want to be able to let it breathe a little bit more? Um, well, the original movie had to cut out whole chunks of the full story. And I think when the fans think of this story, they think of, yeah, there's Superman dying and Doomsday. But then there's what happens afterwards. And what happens afterwards is the part of the story that uh, I think people have really been wanting to see yeah. for a long time. And so I was glad that they, they uh, Warner Home Video came in saying, we want to do this in two movies. We want to put everything in that got left out last time. And, you know, we want these to be two big movies. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so the first part gave us all this time to really build up Superman and do a real Superman-centric story in a way that we haven't had a chance to do in a while. Yeah. And the thing that I love so much being an animated film fan and going to Comic-Con is that Friday nights are Warner Brothers animated film nights. We get to see the DC movies. What is that like for you? Because obviously this one's going to premiere this year at Comic-Con. It's always been a blur. I really, I mean, it, it's, it's so much going on up until that moment and then you're out on the stage afterward and hopefully they've liked it. I, you know, for the most part I've had really great cons, but it's a blur. It's It happens so fast and then it's over, and then you're like, did that just happen? Am I really here? You know, From being a fan who came to Comic-Con to being someone actually, someone that's actually going to Comic-Con to see is, is, I still haven't wrapped my head around that. Well, I know I'm so excited to see it this year at Comic-Con, and so I'm pumped to see you there as well. And yes, I'm sure we'll have some there will be tears in the audience. There it's better be. <laughs> Tears this of, was a hard movie. I just want to say that. I'm whining now. Tears no, it was of, hard. Ha I was going to say happy <laughs> tears, but not happy tears. Like right. sad tears, yes. but for the right reasons. Yes, yes. No, it's a good cry. I think yeah. it, it, that, that was the mark of our success to me. Like, is this a good cry? And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's a pretty good cry. It's the mark of a good DC animated movie if you get a yes. good cry and all of you guys watching. So bring your tissues. Hard humor and heroism. Remember that. Before we go, we have got the Batman black and white and Gotham City Garage Supergirl statues from earlier in the show, and we are giving them away to one of you. For your chance to win, visit dccomics.com slash watch and win and fill out the form with all your information. It's so easy, even your cousin could do it, and she once spent an hour having a conversation with her reflection in the mirror, so I think you're good to go. Good luck, and we'll see you next time.